on today's video here, as the title says, we're going to do a Swiss Trax flooring install from start to finish. Uh, this is my dad's uh, new house, new garage. Looks pretty typical where they have some paint splatters and things like that uh, on the concrete. Uh, so you know, your options are would, your options here would be to leave it alone. Uh, well, you could also potentially polish it. So you could uh, you could bring in a polisher, which is rather expensive. Uh, you could epoxy coat it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to do plastic floor tile on here, uh, specifically Swiss tracks, rib tracks. Uh, and I'm going to do uh, an install from start to finish where we start with the edge pieces. We lay out our, our center section of the floor with a, with a black border. Uh, slate gray will be our base color. Uh, I'm going to show you the tools you need, the process you would use, whether this is a, a 20, typical 20 by 20 garage like this, or you're doing this in a massive facility of some sort. Uh, so we're going to take you through start to finish of all of the things that you'll need to go through to do this install process. Uh, and, uh, and I'll show you how to, how to do that. So let's get started. All right, so step one is always to uh, lay out a row of tiles, right? So we're gonna lay out a row of tiles and you're always gonna start on the garage door. The garage door dictates everything. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a row across uh, and then we're gonna fit our edge pieces. So there are two different types of edge pieces. There are looped and then there are, I guess they call it pegged. Uh, so these are the looped edge piece. It really doesn't matter which way you go. If you do looped, then you need to do the pegged end of the, of the uh, tile out first. If you do pegged, then you would do the opposite. You would do the looped end of the tile out, you know, toward the garage door. I like the pegged, or I'm sorry, I like the looped version. It just, I don't know, the connection I think is a little bit more stout for, for our edge pieces. Uh, but basically what we're gonna do, again, we're gonna lay out our left to right and then, uh, and then we're gonna figure out you know, how to center this and that'll dictate you know, where we are against the walls. We'll try to make as, as little cuts as possible uh, and, uh, and then we'll start to, uh, we'll lay out our edge pieces. Uh, so we'll probably do, what I normally do is do a couple of rows. Once we do a couple of rows, we'll actually close the garage door, kick it up against the insulation, you know, the little rubber stripping of the garage door, and that'll dictate, that'll set our floor and where we're gonna, where we're gonna um, uh, set the, you know, set the rest from, from, from front to back. Uh, so we'll uh, go and clip these in here and uh, run through this real here real quickly. A couple of things that, uh, that make these tiles, these Swiss tracks tiles superior to other options on the market. First, they're 15 and three quarter by 15 and three quarter. So they're, they're bigger than your traditional 12 by 12 tile. Think about it in your home, you know, if you did a 12 by 12 versus a 20 by 20, a 20 by 20 is generally gonna be more expensive, but also is gonna look a bit more modern. The other thing that's a, a big advantage of these is there are, they are three quarter inches thick. So whereas other options are half an inch thick, and I mean, this is just my estimate, you, you actually get a little less plasticky feel. You know, I played volleyball in college and we'd always play on these crappy uh, sport uh, courts that they would just lay right on top of concrete. <laughs> just think about how miserable it was diving or trying to play on those, on those type of tiles. This is about as close to concrete feeling as you can get from some plastic flooring. And you'll notice how, you know, how easy this clips together. So this, like I said, this is a pretty good little uh, Saturday project. Another thing that's important, if you'll notice the, 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 the bottoms of the tiles, notice there are channels or ridges here. These channels allow water to run out. So this garage, like most garages, sloped here. Uh, and so if you were to drive your car in from the rain or you had snow or sleet, if you were in a colder climate, the stuff, the water can, you know, will follow the concrete and it can run out if it were going to run out anyway. So if you, you know, whether you had plastic tile or not. So the basic idea here is that we can cover up all the crap. We'll talk a little bit more about dirt as we get this process moving. Uh, but that's the, uh, you know, this is the extent of, of how we set this up. Now, if you, if you go on and you look at the floor designer, so on SwissTracks.com, I think it's forward slash, forward slash forward slash garage, forward slash floor designer, or just go there and click on the floor designer section under the garage section. Um, the floor designer is a little clunky. It's not very robust. Uh, it won't give you like, a, like 
let's say that this wasn't perfectly symmetrical and that bump out was a little further out than this bump out. Um, and and so, so one thing you don't want to get too, too worried about is the, you know, the having the design perfect in the floor designer. You just need to make sure you have enough tiles to do the job. Uh, and so this is where the, you know, the real world setting up your floor design comes in. So we're really just going to start laying out the floor. I want to do a black border that runs here and then back and then runs, you know, across the edge of the garage. I'm not really too keen on setting up parking spaces. It's really hard to get that to line up exactly the way you want because these tiles are so, so wide at 15 and three quarters. So uh, this is where you just manually start laying out the tiles and you get an idea of where your, where your design and how, what your design is going to end up looking like. So this is where we'll make a manual decision here. So here's our tile, what it looks like if we were to put you know, the tiles up to the edge. So we have a tiny little gap here. I run it all the way across and then I have a tiny little gap over here. So now the question is, do I just take one side and bump it all the way up against the edge? Or, and then have a bigger gap and make only one cut? And so what's going to dictate that is what our perimeter border looks like as we lay out the tile. So again, don't get excited, just start laying it out. We haven't cut anything, so we can undo it all. So let's start laying out our black border and we'll kind of see how it looks. So one thing you want to be sure to take note of as you're doing this uh, is the position of where your, you know, where your loops and where your uh, pegs are. And so you want to lay it out as simply as possible. So I can lay out large sections at a time. So in other words, it wouldn't make sense for me to go from right to left in this case because I'd have to lift this tile up, pop it loose to try to get the loops under and then try to grab the pegs. And so you'll see what I'm talking about if you ever do a floor, but you'll start to lay it out where it's as more efficient to lay it down. You can start sort of, you can have, if you have a couple of people, three or four people, get your kids, they can be the stompers and stomp the tile in place. Uh, and uh, the other thing you wanna make sure you do, which I've done before, you want to be aware of where your loops and pegs are because it is possible to put this in backwards. Like if I decided to just go from here, I could, even though the tile is supposed to go this way with loops and loops, it'll still go this way with loops and loops. And you'll find yourself, like I did this in the HQ 1.0, I did it like 45 feet back and then I realized I put the darn thing in backwards. It was supposed to go this way. So just something to keep in mind as you're laying out your floor. You want to make sure that you don't, you don't do huge sections wrong. I mean, it's kind of hard to do it wrong, but it, uh, it's frustrating, especially if you have a large garage and you're doing a large section, you screw it up. You can see this will start to go fast. I mean, we're like two and a half minutes into here. If I wasn't chatting you up, it'd be even quicker. Okay, so now, now is where we want to dictate our tile placement from left to right, and this will dictate our cuts. So notice the way I have it positioned. So if I have the full tile butted against the wall here, then my black border is nicely in line with the wall, but then on the right side, my black border is off. So because of the symmetry of this garage, this little bump out section here is identical to this section here. And so what we're gonna wanna do is lay the floor out symmetrically, which means we're gonna wanna make, we're gonna have to make a small cut all the way across each wall, which, you know, if you were budget conscious, uh, you, you, you may, you know, depending on how your garage layout looks, you may make some of those sacrifices. But if you think about this logically, if I cut, so if I cut this side off of the tile and that side off of the tile, I'm still going to use the same one tile that I cut. I end up with a lot of waste in the center, uh, but that'll be, you know, it's more efficient than you think. Now I happen to have all kinds of leftover pieces from all these various projects I've been doing. So, well, we should have plenty of, uh, of extra 
pieces that I won't even need to cut full tiles, but in your case, if you don't have extra pieces, you're gonna be cutting, we'll work on cutting here in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna get this whole section centered where we want it, and that's gonna dictate our positioning. So I, again, I think we're gonna to wanna to tape measure it and just have it identical left to right. Okay, so what we're gonna to have to do here, we're gonna to have to pop this, after we get this centered, uh, actually, we're gonna center it without. So pull the, the, the extreme right and left off. Otherwise it's gonna interfere with the door. You can just pull the one tile out. Okay, so now, now we know what our border is gonna look like. So now we're gonna put all our edge pieces in place. <clears throat> so you can see, we haven't needed any tools at all yet other than a tape measure and even that. You could, you could eyeball it if you wanted to pretty easily. Okay, we've laid out our edge piece all the way across. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna close the garage door and we're gonna center this all up. Okay, so we got the garage door closed. Now what we'll do is we'll take and just jam this up against it. <clears throat> And then we're gonna take our tape measure and we're gonna measure each side and get it centered up here. And actually a really easy thing to do is let's put a tile in place. So put a, okay, you already got two tiles there. Let's put another tile here. And I can't do it here because we're gonna to have to do some kind of cut. You know, right here we're gonna to have to end up cutting you know, this, this particular tile. So we're gonna, we're gonna position it based on our tile number two. Okay, so we've got inch, inch and three quarters, two and a half. So we need to come that way. Too much, too much. Two and an eight. All right. So let's make sure we're buttered up against the door. Hope our front door, hope our garage door is straight. Boom. Look good. So that's how we position our floor by kind of running from left to right. So we'll have a roughly two inch cut to make on the side all the way against each wall. So see what I'm talking about? We're gonna have to make a cut here to cut around that. And I have it buttered up against the insulation of the door. And then we're good to go. So now we can speed through all of our tile installation here. Now, we wanna take note that we don't wanna slide the floor around if we can help it but we don't have to be like, we can go and fix it. We can, we can push the whole floor all at once. And so we don't have to be too, uh, too wary about it. But in this particular application, the way we've laid this out, we wanna go from left to right. So the best, best way to do this, start on the left, I'll lay out the tiles and then you'll just step on them. We'll cut that one. When you're designing your floor, one thing I would urge you to do is when you get the result of the floor designer, you end up with a certain number of tiles of each color. I would round up. And I know this is expensive stuff, but I would round up significantly. You're gonna screw up some cuts likely and you're also likely gonna end up with 
some other applications where a tile might make sense, like putting it in a cabinet or something like that. So I would suggest having extras. So let's talk a little bit about pricing and other, other flooring options. So the, the way that I discovered this stuff, and I know people get real angry about plastic flooring for some reason, but I discovered this because I'd done, first I tried to do polished concrete and my floor already had existing stains. This was in my previous house. And so we tried polishing and it looked like crap. And so then I decided to try a clear epoxy because I wanted to, I wanted to just look like, like concrete, but I wanted to look better, cleaner. And the clear epoxy turned it like really dark, almost black, look, it didn't look good. So then we did an, a, a metal epoxy so the clear epoxy was the base layer anyway, and so we did a metal epoxy on top of that. The guy that did it, his uh, roller, it was a pink pink roller blew up while he was rolling and, and turned half the darn floor pink. And this was like a $5,000 floor, you know, that I was doing this really supposedly awesome looking metal epoxy system with a urethane top coat. It's supposed to be really stout. And that within months, there was a patch that looked, well, first off, the, the, the floor, the reason why companies do the chip systems is because it masks the hideousness of all the roller marks and scrapes and scratches and imperfections that you get from rolling out a shiny paint. And so they do the chips to disguise all of that crap. But I don't like the chips. The chips remind me of my grandmother. You know, I just don't want that. And so the epoxy, first there was a pink spot on the floor, like a huge spot, like a quarter of the garage was pink. Pinkish, yellowish, pukish, hideous. So that was the first problem. And he came out and tried to fix it, just kind of scuffed it up a little bit. But here's the problem with epoxy, you can't just fix it. A lifetime warranty doesn't mean squat. You can't just, sand it down a little bit and put new epoxy because then it'll peel. And so if people think out like, well, I got a lifetime warranty. First of all, the guys that are doing flooring don't have any money to be warrantying all kinds of stuff. And what'll happen is they'll come out twice, do some hack job fixes, and then they'll just disappear and stop returning your call. I'm telling you. They don't give a crap what their better better business bureau rating is. So They'll tell you they do, but they don't. So you gotta be prepared for all of this stuff to happen to you. So this stuff costs $4.95 a square foot. Um, I sell it for $3.95 a square foot and eat the cost of shipping. So uh, it's what 20% off a list and then whatever the shipping cost is, which is substantial if you're doing a big floor or any floor, it's substantial, substantial cost of shipping, I eat that. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the cost. They have all the other things you can do, like vinyl tracks and some other things you can do to kind of spice it up if you wanted to. I'm a boring dude, so I want it to be simple and clean. But uh, this stuff is relatively inexpensive in comparison to some of the other options. And it's, you're crazy to spend, you know, to get it for $3.25 a square foot and get some inferior tile. There's just, there's no one else can touch this stuff. I'm telling you, there's no contest. I don't know why the other companies that make this wouldn't just copy it. <laughs> I'm sure Swiss Tracks just count their blessings or maybe they have a patent on this sizing. But to me, this is the best option. All right, so across the back here, mainly because I made a gross miscalculation on how many tiles I actually have, but we're doing rubber tracks. So notice, this is a rubber tile. This is a plastic tile, you know, not as pliable. And you can hear the difference between how rubber sounds and plastic sounds. Now, the rubber tracks can't be driven on, but they're more anti-stress if you're standing on them. So I do them across the back of garages a lot of times because that's where you're walking and standing if you had a workbench. I wasn't intending on doing this, but I had some leftover tiles 
And so this is what we're dealing with. And the reason why you can't drive on them, they're just softer and then the joints aren't as, aren't as stout. So this, hopefully, we have enough because I, again, made a serious calculation error. I went upstairs and looked at how many boxes I had and just did a quick rough calculation and uh, sure enough, I don't have enough. At least not the way I originally planned it. But this will look good. So, because we're gonna use this, uh, we're gonna pretend like I planned on this. But here is rib track smooth. And uh, I don't think this is the eco tile, this is just a regular rib track smooth. And so because we put a floor mat down here, I'm gonna put the smooth tile in right in this section. And this will be where the floor mat will go. Yeah, that's gonna work out great actually. That's gonna be my new design. Okay, easy parts done. So we have the whole center section of the garage that started raining, so to bring everything inside here, we're gonna move it back outside again. We've got the whole center section of the garage. So now, you're gonna have all these partial pieces. And so I've been kind of laying out, and I have, I think, all of them, so I don't have to cut any full tiles. Luckily, because as I mentioned earlier, I don't have nearly enough tiles like I thought I did. So here's how you do this. This is where you screw this part up. I'm cheating a little bit because I don't have a full tile. If I had a full tile, it's a little more complicated. So first, I want to make sure I have it lined up right. So I want to make sure I have flat edge to flat edge, and then flat edge to flat edge. And this is where it gets confusing because the, the loops are here. So your tendency is going to want to be to go like this and then cut it wrong. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is take my measurement, which is two and an eighth. So I, I take the, the towel's gonna go like this, but I flip it around and measure my two and an eighth here. And I'm gonna cut a little bit short. Now, depending on where you are and how temperatures change, um, these will expand and contract. Where it becomes really problematic is if you have direct sun. So if you have your garage door open all the time and direct sun comes and beats down, your, your floor tiles are gonna expand and if you if you put it up real tight to the wall, the thing is going to bow up like crazy. Now, because most people don't do that, I don't leave the garage door open hardly at all in, in the middle of the day, so I never have that sun beating on it, so I don't care. So what I normally do is cut it tight. So I cut it nice and tight to the, to the, um, to the wall. Now let's talk about tools here. So here is a floor tile cutter. Now. This sucker is 750 bucks. This entire floor was 800 bucks to do. You know, a thousand bucks to do. So is it, is it going to make sense to buy a floor tile cutter, a $750 floor tile cutter for an $800 floor? Probably not. So what I would suggest you do is get yourself a table saw from Home Depot for a $30 rental for the day. Uh, and you just make your line and then make your cut. Uh, and in my case, I have a floor tile cutter, so I made my line, I get it flat and straight. This is where having a smaller tile is a little bit problematic in keeping it flush and a straight cut. And then boom, I make my cut. So you obviously aren't going to be able to do that if you don't have this cutter. And renting it wouldn't even make sense because it would cost $250 to rent it and ship it back and forth in some specialized case. So I'm telling you, just rent a table saw or a chop saw or a circular saw and, and you can do this job in, it, this might save you 15 minutes in an entire floor. So don't worry about having a floor tile cutter. If you're buying a $8,000 floor, because it's a massive facility, it might make sense to buy a floor, floor tile cutter or rent one if you can find them. But good luck finding a specialized plastic floor tile cutter. All right, so there's one. Let's do another one real fast. It should be the same dimension 
Yep, two and an eighth, two and an eighth. So a lot of times your walls aren't gonna be straight. Uh, and so what you can do is do a measurement here and a measurement here, and then just cut it at a slight angle on your chop saw or your, or your floor tile cutter or whatever device you have. So if there's a, a lot of times you'll have the, the wall starts to angle on you and so you'll have to uh, you'll have to kind of play that game of making a mark there, making a mark there, and then cutting it at a slight angle. You get more efficient at this as you start rolling through tile after tile. And sometimes if you cut it a little too short, you can kind of angle the floor up a little bit and get it in there nice and tightly. But if it's too tight, it's gonna bow up on you. So that was a little bit long, but we got a nice straight cut. And again, you can get just as good of a cut or close to as good of a cut with a, with a circular saw. All right, so we're gonna start rolling through these. Here's what I'm doing, here's what I'm doing for the water heater. You know, I made a 15 and three quarter piece of cardboard. You can see the other side over here and I, I uh, made the templates. I pushed the cardboard up underneath. I'm gonna trace a line right here. I'll cut that out, just like I did here. And that's how I trace the line. And then just cut that with a, uh, with a cutoff wheel. You'd be best if you had a jigsaw for this. All right, so we ended up with four extra tiles. So I'm gonna take the, this, the rib track smooth out of here. Really quite simple, you take a paint can opener. So this is how you would clean underneath anyway. Paint can opener, just pull, pop, and then come right out. No problem. You know, when you're fitting the rubber tracks, you wanna be sure just use your hand to make sure that the, that the pegs go into the loops properly because they're a little gentler. I'll do plastic here. So the only thing I used for this uh, project tool-wise was this right angle cutoff wheel I used a T-square, a Sharpie, and a tape measure. And so that's really all we need. Uh, and then, of course, you'll use either a circular saw, a table saw, or, you know, if you're doing a big project, you'll have the, the bullet, the big, uh, the big uh, tile cutter, which I could, I could source for if you need it. But they're, you know, 750 to 1,000 bucks, something like that. Uh, so let me uh, get the camera handheld here. I'll show you around. We'll I'll wrap up this project. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I <laughs> had a bit of a uh, bit of a calculation error, so we had to improvise, which actually turned out really nice. Uh, I had some extra rubber tracks and some extra black tiles, uh, but I was short on the gray, the slate gray, and so we ended up with a, I guess, a rear standing area. So this will be designated the parking area, you know, in the center here. So that would be designated the parking area. And then you have the area in the back here. There really isn't enough depth in here to put cabinets. So we're gonna have to put like one small cabinet over here on the right, we'll figure that out uh, later. Uh, here's the uh, cuts I had to make around the, around the water heater, which you saw. What I did was make a little template. Got it nice and tight all the way in the back, all the way on the side. You know, here's another reason why you would have or grab, have extra tile. You'll always find uses for them if you have some extras. Just making we made a little tray there, but uh, I, you know, I really like how it turned out. We ended up having enough black to get rid of the the flat tracks or whatever you call those, the smooth tracks, and then had to make cuts all around the corner. Uh, you saw me do this section here. I ended up putting a Another little small piece of the edge, the edge piece all the way down. So the garage turned out 
like you'd expect. Now, since we have OGHQ and we have my house, it's only a mile from my house, there's really no need for my dad to have a bunch of tools and stuff in here. Uh, and so lighting, we have a single four bulb, one of my, you know, obsessed garage, one of my prime light fixtures. So just the single one there, I know it's blowing out the camera here, but you can see the fixture, fixture there. And so there's lots of shadowing, but again, it's enough to, and, and not need to, we didn't want to run wires and stuff like that all throughout the, the, the garage here. So turned out great. So there you go. Another project done. You know, I'm a dealer for Swiss tracks, so we get better pricing than pretty much anyone. So might as well, might as well get it from me. <laughs> Seriously though, it does really help me out. It helps me continue to do this stuff. I bought this floor, so uh, don't, uh, don't go thinking Swiss track sponsored me. I, I bought it. So really pleased. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next project and more crazy. Thanks for watching. So what happens when the when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, foot to the floor.